center stage, center stage, center, center, center stage. Center stage. Welcome to Center Stage. My name is Mark Gordon. Beyond the Visible, Hilma of Klint, a new documentary directed by Helena Dirska, follows the life and career of one of Sweden's greatest artists. The film not only shares some of her beautiful paintings, but also her writing, observations about life, and the existential question, why am I here? Denied the status of a pioneer of modern art, it wasn't until 100 years later that Hilma of Klint got the recognition she deserved. But how did Helena Dirska? Find the story of the art world's best kept secret. I found it actually through a newspaper article in, in German newspapers. And the article, the title of this article uh, was Art History Has to be Rewritten. And I thought, well, great. What a great title. Because I think, I assume history has to be rewritten, should be rewritten very often. Because it always you always have a perspective, you know, when you write something and it can change, <laughs> especially when time goes by. I thought, okay, that's, that's so interesting. So I read this article and it was about this exhibition starting in 2013 in Stockholm, the exhibition on Hilma of Klint. And I was so intrigued that I immediately decided to go to the exhibition when it came half a year later to Berlin. So I went to the opening night to the museum to to see the paintings, I was speechless. That doesn't happen very often to me, but I was really speechless in the beginning when I was standing there. And I had done, you know, I read many articles about the show and Hilma of Klint, everything I could get by the time. So it was half a year from the reading of the article and uh, before I saw the, the pictures in real life. And I immediately knew when I was standing there, you know, surrounded by this huge paintings, like 25 meters of paintings around you. So colorful and so beautiful and a pure joy coming out of those paintings. I really discovered that it couldn't be true. Everything that was written, I mean, most of the things that were written couldn't be true, that she was just forgotten. She was known in the art world, but they, they all said, no, no, we have forgotten her. If you ever have seen one of her paintings, you don't forget them. I could feel it very, very, very um, strongly that this is something really important to do. For me also, but I think also for many people. And while I was doing the film, it was so interesting that, of course, Hilma Flint became more and more and more uh, famous and that is absolutely fabulous. Sweden was one of the first countries who allowed women to study art. The male students were not really amused about the uh, female students. Of course, they thought they are less talented and everything. They could study art, but of course, they couldn't be better than men. Female students, art students, were not allowed to draw nude, uh, how do you say, nude acts, right? But she, she didn't care. She just got herself a man and he was nude and she painted him. And obviously she didn't obey the rules. And if you look closely into history, it doesn't matter where you look at, literature, art, music, whatever, you find many of these um, stories of women who just did it, despite all the regulations they had. One of the art historians in the film also points out that at some point, even families discovered, oh, it's probably not, not too bad if your daughter has a profession because she can probably earn money, you know, in the end, if she's not marrying. So for Hilma Clint, it was her, yeah, her big luck that this was, uh, that, that Sweden was so much further ahead of their time. So they were one of the first to allow women to study art. I'm tired of this. Um, stories about women who couldn't do this and couldn't do that because there are so many stories about women who just did it. And that's what I like about Hilma of Klin's story. She just did it. It was a very male world. And one of the male um, cliches, I have to say, is, of course, that you make a career and be successful and be the strong man. And of course, this is no less important to men than to women. I think it's very uh, frustrating that this is such an uncommon thought, of, obviously, <laughs> to, a, to an artist who probably thinks, I'm not interested in, in a career. I'm not interested in doing what you call a career. I'm not interested in making a lot of money because you think my work is worth it. But I'm interested that the people want really to know what I'm doing and really follow my questions in life. 
I feel that Kandinsky, for example, he has looked a lot of like that. How is my career? How important can I be? That's why he wrote it. I have done the first abstract painting. And now it's not him. But Hilma Afghan, she didn't care about that. She, she, she really didn't care. And in the end, I have to say, um, yeah, she succeeded even with more power than he did. I think the only person I can think about was, by coincidence, American, is Henry David Thoreau, for example. He, he also lived this way. By the way, he, he died in the year Hilma Afghan was born. Those are people who are really, really important to humankind because they really show us what is important, not just in their lives. We all die in the end. And I think if you're aware of that, then you, I mean, we know the world is probably like it is, but if you can find a way where you still can make a living and but still follow your path. Obviously, that works. And it worked for, for Hilma of Klint. And she really went on. It is strange in a way that she was not interested in a career, but I think she chose the better way because you don't make yourself dependent on the opinion of others. She always wanted to show her paintings. It's not true that she didn't want to show her paintings because this is always sad. That is not true. But she didn't want to sell them or show them on any price. And I think this is important. She didn't say, okay, just go to a gallery and then probably from my series of 26 paintings, you can have four of them. She painted a series not to make money. She painted a series that everybody can see the development, the development, how you come into abstraction, how you come from the seeing from the visible world into the invisible world, which is beyond the visible. I, I did not just make a film about an artist. I also made a film about a human being, let's say, uh, Hilma of Klint, who was truly, truly, truly interested in the question, what are we doing here on this planet? And she was seeking for truth in her life. And that's what she said. And she said, you have to go and seek for truth because otherwise your life is not worth it. I mean, that's what she has written at some point. What is my life? Why? What am I here for? And finding out in her time about all these discoveries that were made about, you know, physics, the quantum physics, about the discovery of X-rays and everything. I mean, of course, this was a very, very special time. I think it was just a period of 10 years where they discovered X-rays and radioactivity. And they discovered so many things that we can't see. And this is also true today, so we can still wonder about that, because all we see is 5% of the light. Human beings are able to see 5% of the light, and the rest we just can't see. And the way how life is organized on this planet, I would say, we think we see everything, we know everything, and we just go on, and we just should be intelligent enough to, to understand, and then we move on. And Hilma of Klint was not, she was not... Um, this was not her goal. She was interested in things. She needed to know how things work. She was interested in physics and this natural sciences. On the other hand, she connected it very, very much with the question, what is life and how should my life be? I simply have to say that's how I feel about my film and about the biography about Hilma of Klint is that she has lived a truly successful life. For me, this is a truly successful life, that you really dedicate your, your inner feelings to something that you feel that is your truth, and then you go this way. The way she worked, the spiritual way, and I have to say, the group, the, the five women, they work together is, is, is more like a meditation. It, it feels for me like they met together and they meditated, and with this meditation, they came to a place I think Kandinsky never visited, let's say, you know, a place in your mind where you can probably really see things. And that is something where Hilma of Klint succeeded. And she went there without being afraid of that. She really followed the way her life needed to go. And she followed it without questioning if people think she is crazy because she's doing this or she sees spiritual things or whatever. In the end, she didn't care. Even if she had doubts, of course, I think everybody has that. She was a human being on this planet, but in the end, she really followed that. And um, 
that made her life very successful. And so, um, yeah, this is something I really would like to include in my life even more and more. Only for those prepared to leave their familiar life behind will life emerge in a new gown of continually expanding beauty and perfection. But in order to attain such a state, it is necessary to achieve stillness in both thought and feeling. This quote in the film, this is a very early quote when she was with another group. Um, it's called uh, the Edelweiss group, uh, where they met. And uh, she was one of the youngest um, uh, members there. And obviously somebody said, OK, you're the one, you're here to do that. Whether you believe on that or not, I think it doesn't matter in the end because it just matters what she did. And her most important works are not signed. She didn't sign them. This is the ego-less work I'm talking about. It was, she said it was given to her, but in the end, I would say she was holding the pencil, you know. Even if I think, for example, how I come up with ideas sometimes, the best ideas that you have an art, as an artist, you don't think them. They're coming to you somehow, and you can't explain that in the end. So I guess that's a bit the way also Hilma of Klint worked. And she, all, I think she needed the help to think that somebody was talking to her in this way. With Hilma of Klint, I think she, she succeeded somehow because she was in this kind of meditation. But that is true. She didn't criticize it because she said, oh, it's coming through me, so I have to let it out. And I discovered that for myself because I also intended, um, when I was doing things or even in the editing, I thought, oh, is this good? And, and at some point I thought, okay, just let it go, you know, because you just have to, sometimes you have to, to look where it leads you. We think we can control life, but that is not true. Life is not controlled by us. And that always occurs to somebody if somebody dies, if you have an accident, if you get ill or something. Life is really showing you where to go, but it's not you that's just showing life. And if you're really aware of that, then probably nothing surprises you and you can be extremely open, like Hilma of Klint was, really, really open to go beyond borders and especially of beyond borders of thinking and um, even in this quote she also talks about um, that you have to learn the stillness in thinking but also in feeling and that is of course a very buddhistic um, buddhistic rule because even your feeling sometimes we're angry and we we think this has to be this way and that but if you really start to get in a meditation uh, or in a meditational way to start to get calmer, even in your feelings, then you can look from far above on your feelings and probably realize that nothing is so important as you thought in this second. This is something that she really, that Hilma Flint really achieved in her life. A spiral signals development. And if you follow a spiral inward towards the center, you can think of that as going deeper. Yeah, the spiral is a, is a very important form she always uses. This is also something that comes uh, from theosophy because it means when you go with the spiral that you can go to deeper meaning and uh, to real depth. When you follow a spiral, you go further, further on to the real knowledge and uh, the, the spiritual and also the most important knowledge for humankind. That is also the reason why she planned this um, the spiral-shaped um, temple for her paintings. And this is also a question what I would now like to discuss. While I, I have done this um, art history question in my film, I mean, I said it out loud that she was the first, we know it right now, and I did that in the film because otherwise nobody would have listened. We needed to point that out because those are the rules that are made and that was important. But now I think it is more important to ask the question, where should Hilma of Klint belong to? Does her work really belong to a museum? Because I think this goes even further. As we already uh, mentioned about how Kandinsky and Klee, they all went on and thought, okay, I want to hang my, my, my work into galleries and museums. And Hilma Afklin didn't. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be done. I think it's, it, it should be done. But I think in the end, Hilma Afklin should get her own temple or at least her own place. And that probably should be in Sweden, somewhere near nature. Or she should get a place where people can sit down and also 
think and uh, really feel the stillness and the power of her paintings. There are always challenges that arise when making a first film. Fortunately, Helena Dirschka had a great support team, her mother. She was the one, of course, who supported me from the very beginning. And even, even in the times where nothing looked like it would become a film because we did not have enough money in the beginning and this was not working and sometimes uh, it was complicated to film somewhere or whatever. She always told me, be patient, just wait. It will work in the end. She knew more than me. <laughs> Last year, I traveled really almost the world with this film from film festival to film festival. And I went to a lot of screenings. And after the film, the audience, they approached me deeply, deeply touched. And I'm happy that that worked because sometimes people can't even talk. They're standing in front of me and I can tell you, I have never been hugged so much <laughs> the, as last year after my film. People really come and sometimes they just hug me and thank me for that. And it's really a true, it really comes from their hearts. Yeah, that's not bad if you can open up their hearts a bit so that they can feel the warmth that is coming out of those, this oeuvre of this whole work. Mm. I mean, Hilma Afflins, yeah. Beyond the Visible, Hilma off Clint is currently streaming online. For more information, visit kinomarquee.com, K-I-N-O-M-A-R-Q-U-E-E.com. Until next time, this is Mark Gordon, and I'll see you center stage. Center stage, center stage, center, center, center stage. Center stage. Center Stage is taped in front of a live studio audience.